Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young with Hearing Solution Centers, and today we're going to talk to you about the second of our series on the middle ear. Coming right up. So when you think about the middle ear, if we're gonna go over to the very first video, if you've watched the first video, you need to watch it again, because you need to see some of this. But I'm gonna show you the middle ear wave. So this first video, you're gonna see a wave that goes into the ear. It sets up into the ear, uh, it sets up in the ear, goes into the, um, in, uh, the middle ear, all the way from the outer ear to the middle ear, hits the eardrum, it pushes into the eardrum, through that, that is connected to the bones, and the bones send it in in a pumping motion, in a piston-like motion, into the inner ear. Now, we're not gonna talk about the inner ear, okay? The inner ear is the cochlea. Now, some people think the inner ear is the middle ear, where the eardrum and the bones are. Very different, okay? So we talked about otitis externa, which is external ear infections, and we talked about otitis media, which is an infection of the middle ear space. And those are normally bacterial infections, which we have different types of antibiotics that will fix that. Now, let's do the bones a little bit, <coughs> excuse me. In the bone spaces, we're gonna have the ability for the bones to move in, so you're gonna see that pumping motion. That's what we were talking about. Now, if you notice, there's three bones. So in, the, in those areas, those three bones, there's two different types of disorders, and I'll have it shown up in here, but there's two basic disorders. One is a fixation of the bones that we'll talk about in a second. And the other one is called disarticulation. So a disarticulation is broken bones. Now, if I had a broken bone from my wrist to my forearm, this wouldn't be able to connect together together. And so one of the things when you have a disarticulation of a bone, it can't, you know, set together. Now if you just have a broken bone, a fracture, you know, they can kind of put something around it, you know, you, you cast it up and you're good. But if you have a big fracture that has a um, disarticulated part, part, so it's separated, they'll actually go and put screws in there to hold it in place, okay? So it's a, it's a surgery at that point, and then they will uh, kind of protect you around with maybe a cast. But you can't put a cast on the ear. But let's talk about first, how do you get a broken bone in the ear? So a disarticulation can happen from a couple different ways. Now, I hate to tell you how gross some of this stuff is, but we're gonna talk about the, the more gentle way. Now, you're gonna say, gentle, what? Catch me here. I've seen a ton of boxers. Now, when a boxer is in the match, you know, he's getting punched here and the, and the gut and everything else, but he also can get punched in the ear. Now, we'll see, a, man, you can see some really gross ears because they've broken the cartilage and you'll see an ear that's all messed up and really crazy looking when you look at it. I mean, a hearing aid wouldn't set on that ear. It's a really tough ear. So they actually will go through uh, you know, plastic surgery just to fix that. And the ear physician does that normally. But they can also have a broken bone. See, you've had the skull broken around there too. So in that broken bones, you, you would have the broken bones of the ear and it, it's a big problem. Now, what happens, a lot of these boxers don't get their, their set, set up fixed until they retire from boxing because they're gonna have the same thing over and over again. So they've got significant hearing loss. Now, broken bones that you have in the ear is actually a very straightforward surgery. They're gonna go in and sometimes they can fuse it back together as you saw that, those bones, they can fuse them back together, the ligaments, and they kind of grow in. It never works perfectly, but it works darn good to the place if you have a disarticulation, you normally can fix it pretty well that the person has basically normal hearing. Now the other type of disarticulation that can happen is the tougher type to talk about. That's when we see spousal abuse, child abuse. See, some people will cup the ears and try to you know, talk to the kid and do a quick cup, pull away, and they've created a suction part, 
pulls on the eardrum and, and breaks the bone and potentially the eardrum. Now th that's a tougher disarticulation too. Depends on how much brokenness of the bones. Now if that kid has had a lot of, uh, of beating around them, and I've seen plenty of this thing, you know, they could have skull fractures into that middle ear space where you also have the, the, the ear fractures too. Now again, they can fix that. Sometimes they have to replace the bones. And we're gonna show you a little bit more about that in a second. But they can replace the bones with a plastic type of thing. Did you know they used to use a metal-y kind of thing? And they were okay, but not as good as these cool plastics that they use nowadays. So a disarticulation is the inability for, you know, everything to work in that piston motion kind of way. And so that is an area <coughs> that happens. Now, let's move into what's called otosclerosis. Now, oto means ear, sclerosis is bone growth. Now, one of the things that you will see when we see this is that the ear is moving along just fine, and normally at the stapes, you see that little, that little stirrupy kind of thing, or the other spots, it will have extra bone growth. Now, this can happen partly, let me pause it here for a second, this can happen partly from, you know, mechanical processes. So, so for instance, we see a lot of white women after pregnancy can create this extra sclerotic, you know, kind of growth. So the body's going, you know what, we just need to build up more, more calcium in there. And so ear physicians will do a, a, a stapes, mobilization. That's the first one that they do. It's very successful for the most part. Now stapes mobilization, what they'll do is they'll break off the bones, break everything, you know, all the, take all the junk away, chip it all away, and then reset it in a position so that it works. Now if it works and with the stapes mobilization, and it, it may stay and not grow any more bone. Now, the other type of ability is called a stapendectomy. So let's show you a little bit about this. The stapendectomy is similar to the, uh, the, the fix in there, but what they're doing here, and they're showing you a little different way, but with a metal thing. But this is a metal thing, but sometimes they build it with a plasticky thing. And what happens in there, the stapendectomy is replacing the bone, and you either put a metal, or you put a, uh, a, a high-grade plastics in there that will act more like the bone. The problem is with otosclerosis, it easily can come back. And you say, why can it come back? It's because we're not telling into the DNA of your body, we're not telling the body, stop making bone. Don't do that anymore. You know, so if you've broken your finger and then you break it again and you break it again, the body goes, you know, man, maybe I need to put extra bone in there. And it doesn't happen with everyone, but it happens with some people. That's why we can see people that have arthritis or other issues of not moving their fingers. That's not only because of that, because it can happen because of extra bone growth. And so you're not telling the body to stop create, creating bone. So the stapendectomy is a powerful kind of thing. One of the things that I always kind of recommend is that after having one, maybe two, pause a little bit. That's when you need to take a little bit of time to ask questions of the audiologist and your ear, nose, and throat physician to say, are we really going to fix this? Now, some people will notice that in a couple years it comes back. And it's because we're not addressing the bones and we may never be able to address that. So that's when some people will choose to get hearing aids to be able to help their hearing loss. Because when you get the hearing aids and you do it correctly, th that person hears just like they used to for the most part, okay? Not perfect, but they're really close because they don't have any other problems with the ear other than that necessarily. Now, if the bone growth goes worse and worse, and we're gonna show you that one just again, so let's watch this again. And it's into the inner ear space. If the bone grow growth gets really bad, we call it cochlear otosclerosis, which means the, the sclerosis or the, the bone growth will go into the inner ear 
and start damaging the cells in the inner ear. And that's a really bad thing too. But we see that quite a bit with some people who have long-term otosclerosis. So the audiologist at the end will probably get involved and potentially do hearing aids at that point. Now, it can happen in one ear and it can happen in both ears. It can happen, you know, both ears at the same time or can happen in one side. It's hard to get into because there's all kinds of different things that can happen. Again, with our disarticulation, it normally happens in one ear unless the boxer is getting hit on both sides. So that's kind of how that works. And our last one here is called the, <coughs> the cholesteatoma. So we're going to first show this. It's in the middle ear space. So um, from the area right in the front, close to the eardrum, and close to the bones, you'll have this growth that comes in. And it's like any other atoma means uh, is, is a type of, of growth, whether it's a tumor type of thing. So it's a growth that happens. Now, one of the things you have to like recommend, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years and I've, I've smelled all kinds of ears. It's just what happens with this territory. And with a patient who has a very strong cholesteatoma, They'll, I'll walk in a room and almost instantly you can smell it. It's a very strong smell. It's very hard for other f f friends and family member to be around that person. They're trying to keep clean. It's not to, anything to do with clean, but that puppy has a big nasty smell to it. And it's, it's tough. It's really tough for these people. It has nothing to do with what they've done. They've just had this growth that's happened in the ear. So the ear physician depends upon how bad that is. Sometimes they can poke through the eardrum, go in, pull that thing out, clean it up, you know, patch the eardrum with the tympanoplasty kind of thing and get it pretty good. Sometimes it has infected the bone and eaten away the bones it's infected the eardrum. And so we have these radical mastoidectomies that happens. And what happens is they're, they're cutting out bones, they're cutting out eardrums, they're cutting out, you know, um, the, all the bones of the middle ear, it can be really tough. Now, in the past, those radical mastoidectomies are very screwed up ears, okay? There's really, really significant hearing loss and they're super hard to fix with hearing aids. Nowadays, they're really careful about messing with the ear canal space and, and not, not uh, causing that problem with that too. So guys, I know there's a lot of stuff in here and you're going, you know, how are you, why are you explaining this? It's because I really wanted to show you with these cool videos. And again, thank you to Audigy for building these great videos through ePatient. Gives, you an, gives us an ability to kind of show you what it looks like. And it's a powerful ability to do that. And that's kind of why, you know, I've identified a bit with Audigy Group because they help me with videos I personally couldn't create. I create this, but I'm not going to create those kinds of things. That's a little different kind of uh, animal with that. So I thank you to Audigy Group, but I really would love it if you'd subscribe and ask questions because really that's something we need to help take care of you. So thank you so much for coming in.